here's my cello, sort of. This is an electric bass, but the string length on an electric bass is similar to full-size cello. But I need a C. I have a G on it. Okay, so my top two strings represent the bottom two strings on the cello. You'll be playing this exercise on your bottom two strings, but I will be demonstrating on my top two strings, but in the same position. Okay, and what we're doing here is uh, D flat tetrachords. And from my introduction video, you know that the the uh, the Ionian tetrachord is a whole step, a whole step, and a half step. And on cello, it's too big for us to to make that in one hand shape, so we have to have a little shift. And um, I am going to assume, make some assumptions with regards to fingering practices here. I'm assuming that you're going to make your your whole step between. Um, first and third finger here, and then you're going to make uh, your next whole step by sliding to your uh, second finger, and then make the last half step with your third finger. And the interval of this is a perfect fourth, it's a here comes the bride. Tetrachord, your major tetrachord, and then uh, if you want to do the other half the scale, you skip a whole step and produce the same tetrachord, Ionian major tetrachord. string D flat scale. Now just like on violin you're tuned in fifths so you can make your whole step across the string from where the root is. So your cross string D flat major scale then cross string tetrachord, your Dorian tetrachord, has a um, whole step and a half step and then a whole step. So the distance between the, uh, the root and the fourth is remains the same. It's the perfect fourth, here comes the bride. Okay, so you have your first whole step and then you need a half step, so shift. the natural minor scale is the, the Phrygian tetrachord, so you have a half step and two whole steps. There's the half step, then you need a whole step, and another whole step. Okay, uh, so here's your natural minor scale uh, on one string. Half step, and the next tetrachord is a whole step. And Phrygian tetrachord now. Okay, and here it is again. Dorian tetrachord, then the Phrygian tetrachord. why I'm not using my fourth finger down in the lower positions is because when you get to here you're shifting to the D flat um, 
on on on, uh, on your D string, and so it's sort of in that. Am I in thumb position? Not quite really. I'm sort of on my way there, and your fourth finger is probably um, not coming into play at this point, but it might be. But you can, but you get the idea, okay? Uh, the finger is not important. What's important is the interval. minor crossways and here it is it's it's the Dorian tetrachord and then uh, cross the string to the A string and Phrygian tetrachord then Dorian tetrachord scale would be uh, a Dorian tetrachord and a harmonic tetrachord or gypsy tetrachord. So here it is up one string. The Dorian tetrachord first, then the harmonic tetrachord next. It's all about hearing what they sound like in your ear so that you can, you can recall them and use them anywhere on the fingerboard. Here is the crossways. And cross. You don't need to think about positions. At some point you're going to forget about positions. You'll remember first position, you'll remember fourth position. Uh, after that, everything else is in your past. You don't need that anymore. You just need to know, well, what is that note that I'm going to? And your finger will find it. Now the uh, melodic minor, Dorian, first tetrachord, lower tetrachord, and then a uh, major tetrachord, Descending is the Phrygian tetrachord, and then the uh, the Dorian tetrachord. Okay, so here it is. Dorian major, Ionian, Phrygian, Dorian. Okay, now crossways. Uh, Dorian. construct scales anywhere on the fingerboard. You can visualize the fingerboard with new eyes and new, and new ears. Alright? Good luck!